Now let's think about a convention of rotation that's uh, called XYZ fixed angles. Okay. Now this convention, the consecutive rotations are made relative to the original frame axis. So we're doing a series of rotations, exactly three rotations here for this case. And we're rotating first about X, then about Y, then about Z. But all of the rotations are made relative to the original frame that we started with. Okay. So what we do here, we start with frame B, coincident with frame A at the very beginning. And then we perform what's called a roll. A uh, roll basically is rotation about X by the amount of gamma. And then we do uh, perform a pitch, which is basically a rotation about Y by beta. And then we perform a yaw rotation, which is a rotation about Z by the amount of alpha. Okay. And then after all these three consecutive rotations, I result with frame B. Now, remember, this is all of these rotations are based on the fixed axis. Okay, they're called here fixed angle, angles. That means we are per performing the rotations based on the original frame, which is frame A. Okay, so if we, you know, once we start rotating first about X, both X for A and B are the same line. But then once we, we, once we do the first rotation, of course, the new frame will have a different uh, Y and Z axis from the original axis for A. So the new rotation that we're going to perform about Y, we're going to perform it about the original Y, which was based, based on frame A. We're not going to perform this rotation about the new Y that resulted from the previous rotation. Okay. And then when we go on and rotate again about Z, we're rotating, rotating about Z of the original frame, which is frame A. We're not rotating about the Z of the new frame that came after this rotation. Okay, so that's what's called fixed angles. And these three consecutive rotations are made in that particular sequence about the original axis, which is uh, the axis of frame A. Okay, for this kind of rotation, all the rotations are about the fixed frame A. And the results, uh, the result gives the new moved frame B. Okay, after we, we do all these rotations, we get to frame B. Let's look at this here. This is a graphical of what we just talked about. So we start with frames A and B to be the same exact uh, location or, or at the same orientation. And then the first thing we do is we do roll, which is rotation about X by the amount of gamma. Okay, so when you do this rotation about X, by the amount of gamma, as you can see, Y, B, and Z, B prime. I call it B prime, y, y, B prime, and Z, B prime because this is not the final uh, frame B that we are looking for. Okay? So this Y and this Z, the, the red frame that you see here, are moved away from Y, A, and, y, and Z, A uh, that are part of the black original frame, frame A. Okay? Then we go on to the next rotation, which is rotation about Y by beta. Now remember, this is the, the critical point here. We are doing the rotation about the original Y axis, which is the black line here, YA. So when we do this rotation about YA uh, by the amount of beta, then all three uh, axes of frame B uh, are moved. So now I will call them B double prime. Okay, so this will be Z, uh, this will be YB double prime. ZB double prime, and then XB double prime. Okay? And then the third step, I move on to do a yaw, which is rotation about Z by alpha. And the rotation about Z is about the original Z, which is this fixed uh, line from the black uh, uh, axis of frame A. So I do this rotation about ZA by the amount of alpha. And that would move again Z and Y and X to the final destination or final orientation that I call frame B. Okay, so that would be the final uh, orientation of frame B based on uh, three different rotations that are done consecutively based on frame A. Okay, so think about it this way, and that would be completely different from doing rotations about the new axes that are resulting, which we're going to see this case later on uh, in this section of the chapter. Now, in the case of having this uh, convention of rotation, the XYZ fixed angle rotation, how do I find the resultant rotation matrix after rotating uh, three different rotations? 
So the equivalent rotation matrix, the way we find it here is the order of mat matrix multiplication must be opposite to the order of rotation as follows. So to find the resultant rotation matrix, we call it R, and then here we are listing the order of rotation, rotation first about X, then about Y, then about Z, which describes frame B relative to frame A. And these three rotations are gamma about, about X, beta about Y, and alpha about Z. Okay, so this here describes how we did the rotation about which axis and by how much. Okay, so the way we do this, we have to multiply the, each individual rotation matrix in the opposite way from uh, the order of rotation. Okay, so remember we did the rotation first about X, then about Y, then about Z. That means we have to multiply rotation about Z first by alpha, and then multiply it by the rotation about Y by beta, and then multiplied by the rotation about x by gamma. Okay, so we're doing the opposite uh, multiplication, opposite to the order of rotation. So of course we know uh, the rotation matrix for each one of these. So rotation about z about uh, by the amount of alpha, we can list it here. Rotation about z that means one here and zeros in the remainder elements of the row and column, and then cosine minus sine sine and cosine of the angle, and the angle in this case is alpha. Same thing for rotation about y, we already know the standard format, so we put it here. And then same thing for rotation about x, we already know the standard format, uh, which means that we can put it here. Okay, now if we multiply all these three rotations together, we're going to come up with this resultant rotation matrix, which includes all three independent variables. So the three independent variables are alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay. So if you can see here, all nine elements of the rotation matrix are referring to these three independent variables. Okay, And this came as a result of multiplying these three matrices together. So whenever we do this uh, form of rotation, we can either put each one of these matrices alone uh, and then multiply them in the order that uh, uh, makes sense. So we multiply them opposite to the sequence of rotation. Or we can just go ahead and use this formula right away uh, if the, the multiplication happened uh, first about x, then about y, then about z. All right? Now, what if we have the exact opposite problem? Uh, if we have the rotation matrix or the equivalent rotation matrix, and we are uh, asked to find alpha and beta and gamma that would give us the individual rotations uh, that would result in the given rotation matrix. Okay? So finding the rotation angles from a general rotation matrix. Here, when the rotation matrix is given as rotation about x, y, z by gamma, beta, and alpha, which describes B relative to A, if it's given in general like this, you know, these can be uh, nine elements of, you know, some numbers, or it can be general like that. And we need to find the three rotation angles, gamma, beta, and alpha, uh, that would be uh, resulting in this resultant rotation matrix. Okay, so that's the exact opposite problem of what we uh, just saw. Uh, what we saw earlier is if we have rotations, uh, individual rotations about gamma, beta, and alpha, we can find the equivalent rotation matrix. Here we are given the equivalent rotation matrix and we need to find the individual uh, three angles that are resulting in this uh, matrix. Okay, so in this case, what we need to do is we need to compare the nine elements from the given rotation matrix with the nine elements from the general rotation matrix that was given in the previous step. I just put it right here for reference, temporarily. So we need to compare elements from here to here and come up with equations, solve these equations for beta and alpha and gamma. Okay. Now, uh, for these com from you know from these comparison, we can find relationships that define the three angles in terms of the given uh, rotation matrix elements that are here, the nine elements. All right, let's see how we can do this. First of all, from R11, R21, this is R11, and this is R21, and they're equivalent in this matrix. This is R11, and this is R21, okay? So if we take these two elements and add them, square them and add them, okay? So I'm going to take these two elements, square them and add them. That's what we have here, R11 squared plus R21 squared. They should be equal to these two elements 
after we square them and add, add them as well. Okay, so if we square these and add them, that would be cosine square alpha times cosine square beta, that's that, plus sine square alpha, which is here, times cosine square beta, which is right here. Okay, so we created ourselves an equation here that we can start with. And if you notice here, both of these terms are multiplied by cosine square beta, both of these terms. So you can take these two terms and put cosine square beta as a common multiplier right here. And what's left is cosine square alpha plus sine square alpha. So we can just put them right here. And we know that sine square plus cosine square of any angle uh, is one. So this whole bracket here goes back uh, to one. Okay, so what we have left here is only cosine square beta, which equals to r11 square plus r21 square. From here, we can conclude that cosine beta equals to the square root of r11 square plus r21 square. Okay, so that's the first equation. I'm going to call it equation one. Now, I want to warn you here not to um, uh, go quickly here and find cosine inverse of beta and think that you're finding beta. We cannot find beta out of, out of only a cosine because there will be two correct uh, values. One of them would be the right one and one of them would be the wrong one. Okay, so in order to do this right, I need to also find sine beta. Once I have cosine beta and sine beta, I know which beta is the right one uh, for my problem that represents this rotation. Uh, and for that, we can use a tan 2 function uh, that is available in MATLAB. Okay, so I need to find sine beta before I try to find beta. Now, to find sine beta from R31, this is R31, I'm going to compare this to its equivalent here, negative sine beta. Okay, so R31 equals to negative sine beta, which means that sine beta equals to negative R31. Okay, I'm going to remove this now. Now that we have equations 1 and 2, we can use them together, and then we can say beta equals to a tan 2 of negative r31, which is the amount of sine, and then the square root of r11 square plus r21 square, which is the amount of cosine. Okay, uh, if you're not familiar with this function here, this function basically is a tan inverse function, but it's called a tan2 because it's arctangent with two arguments. We have two arguments here. We put the arguments that, that first, the first argument is the equivalent of sine of the angle, and the second argument is the equivalent of the cosine of the angle. Okay, and we put them here with their signs, negative or positive, whatever it is. And this function basically finds out which quadrant our angle is, uh, which is the correct angle that we were looking for. Okay, so a tan 2 is an arctangent defined using two inputs, <clears throat> and it's available in MATLAB. Uh, and please go ahead and check it uh, and use it in MATLAB. Now, similar to what we did earlier, we can also compare other elements. So here from comparing R11 and R21 with their equivalent uh, here. So this is R11 and this is R21, okay? And since we already have beta value from the previous step, so we're comparing these two and beta. Uh, if you solve that, you know, these equations with beta, the value of beta, then we can find alpha, okay? So with that, then we can find alpha equals to a tan 2 of R21 divided by cosine beta and R11 divided by cosine beta, okay? So that would give me the value for alpha. And again, a tan 2 is a function that's available uh, in MATLAB, all right? Now, similar to this, again, we can compare R32 and R33 and cosine, or add beta, the value for beta, okay? R32 is here, and R33 is here. So we're comparing these two with R32 and R22, and beta, we already have the value for beta from the previous steps, and using these, we can find the value for gamma, which is a tan 2, R32 over cosine beta, and R33 over cosine beta. Okay, uh, so now I have all three angles, uh, alpha and beta and gamma, all right? And then I have special cases, if you notice here, that we have division by cosine beta, now what happens if cosine beta is zero? Then this method is not going to work out, okay? So I put here the special cases when beta is plus or minus 90 degrees, that means cosine beta would be zero. That means the denominators of these here would be zeros, which blows up this equation, uh, and of course it doesn't give me any answer, okay? So in these cases, we have if beta equals to positive 90 degrees, 
then alpha is always equals to zero and gamma in this case equals to a tan 2 r12 and r22 okay so this is the case when beta equals to positive 90 degrees now if beta equals to negative 90 degrees then alpha is still zero but then gamma equals to negative a tan 2 of r12 and r22 okay so these are special cases when uh, beta is positive or negative 90 degrees now I want to note here that a tan 2, as I told you before, is a function that uses arc tangent defined using two inputs. So these two inputs uh, are representative of, the first one is representative of the sine of the angle, and the second one is representative of the cosine of the angle. Okay, let's now take an example on this. Frame B was initially consonant with frame A. We then rotated B about xA axis by 30 degrees. Then we rotated it about yA axis by 45 degrees. And I want you to notice here that we are using the rotation about yA axis, which means that this is the rotation about the fixed axis, okay? yA, xA, both of these are fixed axis of frame A. So this is uh, xyz fixed angles uh, notation, okay? So this rotation about uh, yA axis by 45 degrees. Then we rotated it by ZA axis by 60 degrees. All right. Note that XA, YA, and ZA axes are the original axes of frame A, which are fixed. They're not rotating as uh, I, ro I do the rotations here. Calculate the resultant rotation matrix RB relative to A. Okay. So now here we have, we already know the rotations about X and Y and Z, and we already know the order of these rotations. And we already know that we're using fixed angles, uh, which means that we're going to have to find the resultant rotation matrix by multiplying uh, these rotation matrices in the opposite sequence uh, as that sequence of uh, the rotations. <clears throat> so let's look at the solution. <clears throat> First of all, we know that the rotation about X is 30 degrees. So the general way of writing the rotation about X axis is this way. So 1 and then zeros and zeros here, cosine, negative sine, sine, and cosine of 30 degrees. And then rotation about y by 45 degrees, again 1 here, and then zeros and zeros, cosine, sine, negative sine, and cosine of 45 degrees. And we know rotation about z of 60 degrees, that means 1 here and zeros and zeros, and cosine, negative sine, sine, cosine of 60 degrees. Okay? Now, if we multiply these together, you have a rotation here. Rotation sequence is x, y, z by 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. And that equals to, of course, here now we are doing the multiplication the opposite way of the rotation, the opposite sequence. So r, z first, then r, y, then r, x. If we multiply these together, we're going to come up with this rotation matrix that represents the resultant rotation matrix. Now let's take this in-class exercise here, and I want you to do this on your own, please. Uh, frame B was initially consonant with frame A. We then rotated B about ZA axis by 60 degrees. Then we rotated it about YA axis by 45 degrees. And then we rotated it about XA axis by 30 degrees. So notice here that all the axes of rotation are the original axes of rotation uh, of the fixed frame. Now calculate the resultant rotation matrix RB relative to A. Okay? So I'd like you to uh, please pause this video. I'm going to pause here for a few seconds so you can pause this video and work on this on your own. And then once you're done, you can resume the video and see the answer uh, to this exercise. Okay, assuming that you have answered this exercise now, let's see the solution. So we have rotation first about um, about Z A axis by 60 degrees, okay, and then rotation about Y A by 45 degrees, and then rotation about X A by 30 degrees, okay. So I already know the rotation about X by 30 degrees, the general format here, and the rotation about Y by 45 degrees, and the rotation about Z by 60 degrees. So I can write these down as you see here, okay. Now to find the resultant rotation matrix, let me see the sequence of rotation. 
I rotated first about z, then about y, then about x. So I put here rotation about z first, then y, then x. Okay? So remember the rotation here was all about the original frame, the fixed axes. That means when I do the multiplication of these rotations, I'll have to do the opposite sequence of the sequence of rotation. Okay? So uh, here I put the 60 and 45 and 30 that correspond to the z and y and x. And then here I'm doing this uh, sequence of multiplication of the rotation matrices, exactly the opposite from this uh, sequence of rotation. So zyx means that I have to now multiply rotation about x first, and then y, and then z. Okay? If I do these multiplications, I have all these matrices here, so I can plug them in and do the multiplication. Then you should be able to find this as the resultant rotation matrix uh, from this exercise. Now let's take another example here on the opposite problem. Find the x, y, z fixed angles of rotation, which are gamma, beta, and alpha, for the following rotation matrix. So I, I'm given here a rotation matrix, a general rotation matrix, uh, which includes rotations about x and y and z. And I'm asked to find the x, y, z fixed angles of rotation uh, for this rotation matrix. Okay. So for a solution here, I already found them in a general way. So um, if you guys recall, beta was a tan 2 of negative r3 1 times square and, and square root of r11 square plus r21 square. Okay, I already have uh, all these values, all these elements here. Okay, so that's a tan 2 and then r3 1. This is r1 2 3 and 1. So this is r3 1. And we need the negative of R31, so the negative of this, which makes it positive. Okay, so I'm going to put this negative of the negative makes it positive right here. And then for R11, this is R11, I'm going to square it and put it here. And then for R21, this is R21, again I'm going to square it and put it here. Okay, if we evaluate this, then we're going to find out that beta equals to 0.2618 radians which is 15 degrees if you convert to degrees. Okay, so that's beta. Now, for alpha, if you recall, the equation for alpha was a tan 2 of r21 divided by cosine beta and r11 divided by cosine beta. I already know r21. This is r21. Okay, so I'm going to take it and put it here. And then cosine beta, I know now beta is 15 degrees. So I'm going to put here cosine 15 degrees. And then for R11, I already know it right here. It's 0 0.9077, so I'm going to put it here. And that's divided by cosine beta again, which is cosine 15 degrees that we already found right here. Okay? So if I evaluate this, then I'm going to find out that alpha equals to 0 0.3491 radians, which is 20 degrees um, for, for this alpha value. Now for gamma, uh, if you recall, the general form for the gamma is a tan 2 of R32 divided by cosine beta and R33 divided by cosine beta. Okay, so in this case I already have R32. This is R32 right here, 0.1677, so I can place it right here. Divided by cosine beta, I already found beta to be 15, so I'll put here cosine 15. And then R33, I have it right here, and that's 0.9513 right there. And this is divided by cosine beta, and beta is 15, so I'm going to put here cosine 15. If I evaluate this a tan 2, I'll find out that gamma equals to 0 0.1745 radians, or 10 degrees for this gamma values. Okay? Now, I wanted to check this at home. I want you to take these three values, uh, alpha, beta, and gamma, and see if you do uh, a multiplication in this sequence, rz of 20, okay? times ry of 15 times rx of 10 so that's these three multiplications would that give you r b relative to a back which is given right here please check okay check and make sure that if you multiply these three rotations in this order which is the opposite order of uh, of the original order okay the original order of rotation is right here and we are multiplying this in the opposite order that should give you for the fixed angles that should give you RBA back. Now let's take an in-class exercise here. Find the XYZ fixed angles of rotation 
which are gamma, beta, and alpha, for the following rotation matrix. And the rotation matrix here is given rotation of B relative to A, and this is a general matrix that represents rotation in X, Y, and Z. And you're asked to find gamma, beta, and alpha that would give you uh, three angles that represent this rotation matrix. So I want you to do this on your own. Uh, I'm going to pause for a few seconds. Please pause this video. And once you're done doing this exercise, you can uh, resume the video to see the answer to this exercise. Okay, now I'm going, to, I'm going to assume that you guys have finished solving this exercise. I'm going to go ahead and show you the solution. So for beta, we have this uh, formula here that we have found earlier. And we have all these elements, R31, R11, and R21. This, this is R31. Negative of that, that means negative of negative positive right here. And then R11 is right here. So we are going to square it and put it here. And R21 is this value right here. So we're going to square it and put it here. And that would give me, if you solve this, that would give me 0 0.5236 radians, which is 30 degrees uh, if you convert it to degrees. Now for alpha, it's a tan 2 of R21 divided by cosine beta and R11 divided by cosine beta. R21, we already have it right here. Okay, so we're going to put it in there. And beta we already found to be 30 degrees, so we're going to put cosine beta to be cosine 30 degrees. And then similarly with R11, we have it here as, as 0.6124, so we're going to put it here. And cosine beta is cosine 30 degrees, which we're going to put here. If you evaluate this, you're going to find out that alpha equals to 0.7854 radians, which is 45 degrees. For gamma, uh, it's a tan 2, r32 divided by cosine beta, and r33 divided by cosine beta. So r32 is right here, 0.75, so I can put it here. And cosine beta, beta is 30 degrees, so that would be cosine 30 degrees. And then r33 is the last element here, 0.433, so I'm going to put it here. And then cosine beta again is cosine 30 degrees, which I'll put here. If you evaluate this, you're going to find out that gamma equals to 1.0427 radians which is 60 degrees.